made up of everything from power lines to generators to the meters in your home, still runs on century-old technology. It wastes too much energy, it costs us too much money, and it's too susceptible to outages and blackouts. Uh, to offer one analogy, just imagine what transportation was like in this country back in the 1920s, 1930s, before the interstate highway system was built. It was a tangled maze of poorly maintained back roads that were rarely the fastest or the most efficient way to get from point A to point B. Fortunately, President Eisenhower made an investment that revolutionized the way we travel, an investment that made our lives easier and our economy grow. Now, it's time to make the same kind of investment in the way our energy travels. Is it just me? Is all this infrastructure talk really exciting? <laughs> the president today announced the largest award of stimulus money in a single day, $3.4 billion in grants, to make our electrical grid less stupid. What they're working toward, after all, is called a smart grid. Everything from power plants to transmission lines to the electric meter in your house, designed not only to be more efficient, but more resilient, so that maybe sometime in our lifetime, we will stop being a country where the lights go out because it rains. Another joining the 21st or maybe even just the 20th century news, Vice President Joe Biden today announced that thanks in part to a loan from the Department of Energy, a now closed plant in Delaware that used to make um, these very pretty GM cars, the Pontiac Solstice and the Saturn Sky, uh, that factory will reopen. The plant will now be making these pretty new cars, electric cars, for a company called Fisker that's based in California. The company bought the plant from GM. It's going to pay to retool the plant. And then it plan its, its plans are for, for 2,000 factory jobs and more than 3,000 vendor and supplier jobs by 2014. And those jobs will be making badass American electric cars that look like Batmobiles. All in all, a good day for being able to imagine us having an economy again someday in the future. Joining us now is Eric Schmidt. He's chairman and CEO of a small company you might have heard of called Google. Mr. Schmidt, thanks very much for joining us tonight. And, and good evening to you. Now, you have to tell me honestly before you sing the praises of the smart grid, is this going to be another one of these things that's going to make the kings of Google, including yourself, trillions of dollars? <laughs> Well, we actually didn't even enter in the competition for these awards. We, we support them, however, enormously. The opportunity to rebuild America's energy infrastructure is the great opportunity for creating jobs, getting things fixed, dealing with renewable energy, and, by the way, solving climate change at the same time. This is an important step to make that happen. In terms of what energy infrastructure does for the country, obviously it's easy to imagine the kinds of jobs that come from building new stuff, building the new actual physical infrastructure. What does it mean beyond that, beyond the initial building, in terms of jobs? Why would it improve the economy? Well, to start with, we are going to have to rebuild the entire digital transmission network of power and all the interconnection points it has. It has to go from an old line, unchanged model to a flexible model that looks a lot like the Internet is today. And all of a sudden, then, power can get on and off this equivalent of a highway, as the president called it, and work really well. Now, what we've learned in our work with power meters and other things is that if you measure consumption, for example, if citizens in their homes can measure their consumption, and they'll typically reduce their power needs by maybe 10% because they actually know what it is. If half of American households do that, it was the equivalent of saving 8 million cars worth of energy use. Wow. When a company like Google uh, looks at international operations and opportunities, how does our investment in our in infrastructure, our energy infrastructure, our communications infrastructure, how does that compare to the countries that we're competing most with right now? Well, unfortunately, the answer is not good. China, who is the com competitor here, has decided to become the world's leader in all the piece parts and all of the necessary hardware and supplies to do this globally. To that end, they're spending more than $100 billion on the same thing that today, in the largest awards we've done in America, the private sector plus the government will invest about $8 billion. You see the gap. 
the theory behind some of this types of government investment, and obviously part of it is trying to catch up to China, trying to make sure that we can compete globally, trying to re really retrench the stuff that we've got so that we stop just collapsing every time there's weather of any sort in most parts of the country. But it's also <laughs> supposed to be a growth strategy. And seeing the president today standing in front of that solar panel array reminded me of what we did in the 70s and the 80s when, when consumer subsidies were created for solar power in individual homes and then those were stopped and what had been a, a, an impetus for new, for new innovation and everything sort of went kaput all at once. How do we make this a sustainable longer term thing? What's well, interesting that if you look at the speeches from the presidents back then, they said the same things. The need to get off of oil, the need to have alternative energy sources, the need to create jobs and get these industries going. The difference now is we've run out of runway. We've run out of time. We literally do not have more than a few decades before some of the compounding issues of climate change make it almost impossible to reverse. So not only do we need to do it now to help us recover from the recession that's affected all of us, but we also need to do it for our children and our grandchildren. I'll tell you that this particular set of activities, rebuilding energy infrastructure, rebuilding the grid, getting people smarter, is a very, very pro-growth job story. These are high-paid uh, American workers, many of whom have skills that they learned on the automobile factories where they were laid off. Eric Schmidt, Chairman and CEO of Google, you're a very busy man. We really appreciate you taking time to join us. Thank you, sir. Thank you again.